Good afternoon, everyone. If you don't already know, I'm Kathy Hester, and welcome to my kitchen. You may hear my pup, because he hears me talking to you, and therefore he wants something. And Cheryl, who's supposed to be watching him, only notices him after he starts barking. So, I see a few of you guys are here, so it is oat milk day! Yay! Oat milk day! <laughs> I know most of you can't get your oat milk anymore, and it can get hard right now to get some soy and almond milk. If you guys are re-watching this months and months later, this is in the time of new normal and the COVID-19 quarantine. So, however, all times are a good time for oat milk is all I have to say. Good morning, Miss Elizabeth, and good morning, Linda. It's raining in Ontario today. It is quite sunny here in Durham, North Carolina. So who knows? I have not been outside today because I let myself stay in bed as long as my body wanted to. Not as long as my mind, so I wasn't really like hiding out, but um, I was reading and then I went back to sleep and it, I'm in a much better space than I was yesterday. Yesterday was not the best day for me. It ended up being good and I got to hang out with you guys, which is always good, right? So um, those of you who are on, say hi. If it's your first time here, I'd love to know that too. Um, yesterday, we were talking about oat milk, so I thought this would be a good thing to do. And Elizabeth actually asked me on the Sick to Fit private uh, Facebook group, which is Howard Jacobson and Josh Lajani's Facebook group, um, so if you like them, join over there for sure. And good morning, Miss Joanne. And she said it is sunny and 84 degrees. She is in Florida. So, and Joanne actually had asked a question earlier because um, today I am using um, Bob's old fashioned rolled oats, right? So sometimes I use actually Trader Joe's toasted oats and I just find you can even toast the oats if you want to get a little bit of a richer taste to your oat milk. Usually we're not going for that. However, there's no reason not to use them, if that makes sense. I don't know if, if it makes enough difference taste-wise that I would toast them all the time. However, you absolutely can use toasted oats. And you can also use steel cut oats and oat groats. We're gonna use rolled oats because chances are that's what most people have in their pantry right now. The um, original recipe is from my Outrageous Oatmeals. And I've put a link to healthyslowcooking.com to the strawberry oat milk recipe if you wanna try flavored oat milk. That was one of my very first oat milk recipes. We're gonna to talk today about kinda of how to decide what your oat milk should look like. And <clears throat> hopefully um, I'm gonna be selling some of these online through um, Triangle Veg Fest soon. So keep, keep your ears peeled for that. It is out of print, but I have a big box of, box of them. So I would love to get them in your hands. And it's one of the plant-based community's favorite books that I have. And good morning, Brenda. And Elizabeth said, I only woke up because I got a phone call. I stayed up because I saw you were going to be live. All oh, that's sweet. Elizabeth, I'm not sure where you're from, actually. Um, and Joanne says, hi, Brenda. You guys should have the conversation in the comments because I like that. It makes me, it makes me feel like we're all hanging out and making oat milk at my house. And um, so I'm going to show you the way I make oat milk. And I... Actually, we got our Instacart delivery of groceries yesterday, so I have three giant milks in the fridge, so I'm only gonna make three cups. And I'm also gonna tell you a variation that you could do with this um, a special happy thing. And maybe we'll do it at the end after I show you how I, um, how I strain things, which is really easy. So for this recipe, and, I, and Elizabeth's at Los Angeles. Yeah, and Los Angeles is kind of tough right now. I have another friend who's in that area. Um, it's, it's a hot spot, and so I'm wishing you the best for sure. And Bonnie is saying hello from Atlanta, Georgia. Hello, we love Atlanta. So I'm gonna use three cups, and I'm gonna use start off with a half a cup of oats. Now, 
here's how you can bury the thickness. And I like to think of it like this. So there's, if you think back into milk, if you drank milk, there's like whole milk, 2% milk, and skim milk, right? So, and there's heavy cream, and there's half and half. The more oats to water ratio, the thicker the milk will be. Same thing with almonds, same thing with rice, same thing with anything you're making milk with, okay? So you could either, let's say I only had a half a cup of oats, and um, I might adjust my water down if I wanted to make this into a creamer, if it was my last half cup, right? Or I could push it and make it be a little bit of a thinner milk. Uh, Carol says she's unable to view, and I'm not sure why that would be the case, Carol. She can hear it, but she can't. I guess you can hear it, and I guess you can, uh, it could be your internet. That's a good point. It could be your internet, so keep trying. It, there, this will be available for a replay. I just love having you guys on here. Um, so again, it looks like some more people have joined. Those of you who are joined, we are making oat milk with rolled oats that hopefully you have in your pantry. I, I did see on Facebook this really funny um, meme. It was like, all the cookbook authors everywhere on Facebook. Now we're going to make something from things you have in your pantry. And it's like, and some flour, and a peacock feather, and fairy dust. <laughs> So I'm trying not to do that to you. Rolled oats. If you don't have rolled oats, you have steel cut oats, you can use those too. Um, oh, it keeps refreshing. It could be my connection. There's nothing I can do, but it should just keep coming back. My screen is scrambled colors. It could be the internet's bad on my side. Um, let me see if I close close this, if that helps at all. Um... And Cindy said have some, that she missed me. Okay, guys. Um, can you, um, yeah. Cheryl is not being very um, cognizant of the noise in the room. Elizabeth's connection is good. Okay, so one thing, and we've talked about this for the past three weeks, is that everybody, truly everybody, and their grandma and their grandson, is on the internet right now. So there could be some different things going back and forth. Um, and Dixie sees and hears us. Carol said it could not view on the iPhone, but it's working on the iPad. So that has nothing to do with me. Could be Facebook is being a little weird. I don't know. So anyhow, back to making the oat milk. I'm putting in about a half a cup of oats. And actually, let me move this. And I'm going to use the overhead. Yay! Jen made it to a live. Okay, and I've moved my camera. So then I'm going to pour, let's go ahead and just pour two cups of water because this is like my normal recipe. That's two ish cups. Okay. And actually, you're going to see this better, I think, from the front. So I don't know that the overhead camera is going to do as much good as I thought. Okay, so now we're just going to blend the crap out of it. Basically, that's the technical term, people. The technical term. And it can work a little better if you start off slow and it breaks up the oats a little bit. And I do want you guys to, I don't know if you can see it through the, through the phone, but you can kind of see it through here a little bit more. So it's broken up the oats. So if you're doing something like with rice, steel cut oats or almonds, something that you're wanting to soak but you wish you could get this, the time lessened, you can come in here and break them up, then let them have their soak, right? So it'll soak and get everything in a little bit quicker. Um, Elizabeth says neat, and that's such a quiet blender. Oh, no, it's not. That's the lowest setting. It's going to get nasty. Ready? There we go. stop it for a minute and again there's still going to be pieces and you can even see that through here right that's the little pieces sometimes if I'm trying to be super efficient I'll go in and scrape all those down and um, 
I am basically just talking for time to let it have a little more time to get softer. The softer it can get, and I mean, within reason, we do not want to soak rolled oats overnight because it's going to be a slimy, nasty mess. That is an oat only thing. You can soak almonds and rice and other things overnight. Um, do I get foam? Are you talking about if I w were to steam it to make like a latte? I don't make latte, so I only drink iced coffee. So um, if that's what you're asking, or if you're asking if I scoop the foam off, I'm not quite sure. You tell me. Here, let's blend up some more. When I blend it, does it foam? Yeah. Yeah, it totally foams. Yeah, and Jan has had her Vitamix for over four years. This will also work in a Ninja or something like that, too. So we talked yesterday, and I'm trying to decide. Maybe this white bowl isn't the best. Maybe a colored bowl would actually make this a little easier to see. So let me grab one. I have all the plastic bowls, you guys. Here we go. I just think you'll, the uh, milk itself will show up a little bit more. So what I do is I take, make this setup. Now, I want you to really see. See how that's, it's a very, very fine mesh, and it's doubled. I have another one that's not quite as fine that I'm pretty sure I got at Target. And... It works fine too. This works a little bit better. Um, this is a Jamie Oliver one, and if you want the link for it, I can get it for you. So then I'm just gonna pour some of the milk. It's just gonna go straight through. You guys see that? It's just pouring straight through. You're gonna see more of it as it gets to the bottom. And so I do not like to use a nut milk bag for this. Oh, and Elizabeth's Vitamix is cloudy. Oh, my Vitamix is cloudy too. Um, and you don't have to, Elizabeth says she has that strainer, but it's not doubled. And it doesn't have to be. It's just, I love to strain stuff like this. I strain a lot of things like this. Um, so, but also, and Brenda has some great nut milk bags if you're making rice milk or nut milk. And Brenda, why don't you put a link to your Amazon um, or your website to buy those too, because I've tried them and they're very nice. Um, and Cindy's asking, why would you not use a nut milk bag? On oat milk, I do not like to use a nut milk bag because it gets slimy. So the more you touch these, let's, let me let you see this, the slimier it can get. That's the hard part with oat milk. I'm not sure that it, yes, it's not slimy yet, but it can be, okay? And so then what we're doing really, see how there's a film of oats? And I can literally move this around and so where it's not clogged up, it will still roll through, but I do this. And basically what we're doing is unclogging the holes. I find when you smush it or you smush it down too much, like I will totally smush other things down, it makes the slime come out. Now, what you can do with this pulp, you can put it in cookies, dog cookies, you could throw it in with your oatmeal, you could do, you know, use it like probably close to in place of an egg or in a, just throw it in any baked good you're going to make. So I'm not going to push this. I'm not going to push this down very much, okay? And I'm just going to let this sit on top of this water. And let me let you see. Actually, I'll get a glass. Let's pour it in a glass. If you're going to drink this, like, right now, do I have just a plain glass? I 
have a Smancy glass. You guys are going to get to see one of my Smancy bamboo cocktail glasses. And if you see these at thrift stores near me, you need to tell me because I'm all about the tiki's. So this can give you a little idea of about how thick it is, right? And it's not separated at all because we just made it. So A, you can make oat milk every day, not add anything to it and just drink it or put it in food. It's got that nice thick mouth feel that like a whole milk would have or soy milk because I love soy milk. Um, it does have a little bit of an oaty taste to it, but that's a really delicate taste to me. So I would use this as is right now. Now, if I wanted it to last for a couple of days and since only I'm going to drink it, I'm going to pour that back in there. Let me answer some questions and then we'll get back. Um, hey, Susan. See? Siri thinks her name is Susan. I think we have a problem. I think maybe she needs to go to therapy. Um, okay, and it's, okay, here we go. Let's go back, go way back. And Britta says your Vitamix canister is plastic. It won't clean up. If you dry it right after using it, it'll keep clear over time. I'm like, eh, who needs a clear Vitamix container? And, uh, Carol says, would the double strainer be better for quinoa? It's not bad. I use both of those. As long as it's small enough, the quinoa won't throw, go through, it's good. You're golden. And um, Joanne has a technical thing that she would like to say, and it, which is that it squeezes out the starch into your milk, and that's what makes it all gloppy and, and uh, nice. And I said hey to Susan, I think, but just in case, hey, Susan. And um, Brenda gave us a link to her website because Amazon isn't shipping her nut milk bags out. And Elizabeth is wondering why KitchenAid, not KitchenAid, Vitamix did plastic instead of glass. And I think it has to do with the fact that they're basically their blades are, and the things that cut it are in here. So you can't take it apart. So it would, and it would probably would cost a lot more. Now, if you would like a high powered blender that is made out of glass, they're heated blenders. And there's one by Instant Pot and there's one by GoWise. I think there's one by Cuisinart. There's a whole bunch of them. And sometimes they're called soup makers, but I have one of those too. And I love that a lot. They are also a little difficult to clean, but who knows, maybe we'll make soup later this week. Um, and Cindy said, says my oat milk with bag was slimy yeah and that's what's going to happen um and it's not the bag's fault it's not your fault it's just that's the way oats are um oat milk is lovely in smoothies and perhaps i will make a treat for cheryl and show you my secret thing that i do would you bake with oat milk i would do anything with oat milk i would drink it put it in coffees bake with it make soups with it and in fact if you go to HealthySlowCooking.com, I think there's the tomato soup recipe. And actually I put, and this is perfect for these times, pantry times. I put a few tablespoons of oats in there. I put a, a couple of tablespoons of cashews that are optional. Um, a can of diced tomatoes and some spices and we blend it up and basically it makes its own milk. So that's something else you can look at. Carol says that's good to know. Oh, and Brenda says new, new Vitamixes are glass? Huh, I've never seen them yet. Brenda, can you put a link to one of those? Because I'd like to see it. Um, they didn't have, I was someplace that Vitamix was um, displaying their wares last year, and I didn't see any of those. Blender soups. And, okay, I'll get back to blender recommendations. I'm going, to, actually, do we have the other one there? If not, don't worry about it. I'm just going to rinse this out really quick. Yeah, we do have a little, I have two, two um, tops to this one. But this will work fine if you can't find it. You got it? Okay. 
This one's a little broken and I still use it. <laughs> I, I, it actually fell and broke a little part over here, but it seems to still be solid. So I'm going to show you something that you can do to make your, nut, your oat milk not separate. Did you guys see the big like light to dark? It was very weird. Um, perhaps it will rain like I want it to. Okay. Now we can do this before we strained, but I'm not going to make a whole bunch of different um, oat milks right now. And that is why we were doing it this way. So let's imagine. And you can kind of see too, you see how it, it's thick, yummy. And oat milk takes so little time to make, you don't really need to make it ahead of time and keep it. Like it takes five minutes to make oat milk. 10 if you're super slow at straining it. Um, hey, Marilyn, and I'm so glad you made it to, to the live. So I'm gonna use something that sometimes people don't like to use. And I know I have some ground chia seeds here somewhere too but they may be somewhere else. So I'm not gonna, I use xanthan gum. Actually, let's do the overhead camera. So that way you can kind of see that beautiful milk. I'm gonna use xanthan gum. I'm gonna use like an eighth of a teaspoon in here. And xanthan gum is also one, if, I think I'm gonna show you a surprise recipe and it's what I use in my surprise recipe too. Um, so I'm going to put about an eighth of a teaspoon. I'm going to sprinkle it on top. Are you making it? Um, I am going to make it. Yeah, I'm going to make it for you. I know she's super excited. Okay, so you guys can kind of see, right? And see, it's just kind of hanging out there. I'm just going to hold this on on low. I just want to mix it in a little bit. And if we want to make it thicker, the xanthan gum as we beat it will be thicker a little bit. Okay, so you're not going to notice that much difference in the milk right now. But what will be different, you can a little bit. It's a little more homogenized, right? Isn't that what that word means anyhow? And what it'll do is it will, instead of it separating in a jar, it will hold it together better. It may not hold it together perfectly. You kind of have to figure out the blend to, and here we can do this and you can see it. And that is often how I store my homemade milks. And it just will hold together a little more. It also, makes it a little thicker and um, it does give it a it takes away a little bit of the odi taste but it gives it it is just a thicker thicker thing so it's almost as if it was a little bit boiled down so it depends on what you're cooking in it if you wanted to make this make something like this and use it as a creamer use xanthan gum if it's something you're going to use today don't use xanthan gum and you could probably try some things like um Let's see, like uh, ground chia seeds or something like that too. And uh, I haven't done it with sunflower lecithin, lecithin, but I do have some, so I could try that. I've never tried it. Um, and then, let's see, oat milk is fast to make, but use cold water. That's true. You don't, there's no soaking. You just take water out of the sink and it's not out of the sink, coming from the sink faucet. Excuse me. Um, tapioca starch might work. I haven't tried either one of those. So I say to you, if you try them, please tell us what you think and we'll see. And then also Cindy's saying, what blender do I recommend second to Vitamix? So I have a Vitamix, I have a Ninja. And so the Ninja is the less expensive one and I wanted to make sure to have it and it blends up everything that I've been able to do with my Vitamix the mailman dares go down our street. 
just in case you're wondering what horrible, horrible thing is happening outside my house. Um, I also have a GoWise heated blender. I think they're harder to find right now than the Instant Pot heated blender. I think it's called the Ace Blender. I like it because you just put some vegetables in there, you press a button, it heats it up, and you puree it. And you can make smoothies and oat milk and all the other things. They are not cheap either. They're cheaper than a Vitamix. The, probably the least expensive thing you're going to get is a Ninja or kind of a Ninja-ish kind of blender. Um, one thing I like about my Ninja is I have a spice grinder that goes on it. So I have a more powerful spice grinder. Do you want me to pull out the other one? No. Um, hey, Miss Christine, how are you? Are you making oat milk? I know you're eating super healthy. And, uh, ah, Linda, thank you for reminding me. I put them over here. So I have two books that are on sale as Kindle right now on Amazon for 99 cents each. One is the Easy Vegan Cookbook. Ah, <laughs> the Easy Vegan Cookbook. <laughs> the other is Vegan Cooking in Your Air Fryer. So go and um, you can always look up my name, Kathy Hester, on Amazon. It's only the Kindle versions of those books, but please go ahead and get them while you can because that's like super cheap. Um, okay, great. So I'm going to set this aside. Well, actually, you know what? I'm not going to set it aside. Well, I am going to set it aside. Well, I can't make up my mind, can I? So we're going to make what I call ice cream less shakes. And I've been doing this a lot at home with oats. So I've been putting about a half a cup of oats. I don't strain these because everything's getting kind of blended up. I'm going to put the strainer over here and let's get about two cups of water. I think that's going to be about what I want. We're going to make small ones. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do, and we'll make them chocolate and we will flavor them. Maybe. Hey Cheryl, can you get the choc the cocoa from up? Or unless I have cocoa down here. Let me see if I have cocoa down here. Yep, I need you to get the the cocoa from up at the top. Yeah, and then hand me the maple syrup too. Yeah, I or the one in front of it'll work too. Either one of those. Yeah. Now you could use date syrup, you could use any kind of sweetener that you want. Okay, so we could actually have some dates soaked. My dates are hard as a rock, so I'm not even going to try to start with this. And she said it's Tuesday, anything goes, says Brandy. And Marilyn says she has a Pampered Chef heated blender that's in a glass container. All the heated blenders are going to be a glass container because of the intense heat. Um, and I really like my heated blender. Uh, I make, all through the winter, I make pureed soups. And it's just easy peasy. And again, you can make these nice creamy soups by just putting a couple of tablespoons of oats and or cashews in there. And it's magic. So you don't even have to use up your store-bought expensive milk. You can make, the, make it yourself. And Joanne said you can buy them. Oh. <laughs> Are you talking about my books or the blender? I think Joanne's talking about, you can also buy them as gifts for others. I was surprised at how easy that was. If you're talking about my books, I just want to give you a big hug. Joanne is such a huge support to me and my business, and it just means the world to me. I don't know if you know just how much it means to me, so thank you. And if you mean blenders, yay, give people blenders. Um, and Cindy so says the kitchen looks nice. Thank you. I have a friend who's like, I need to be teaching these people doing video on the web that they need to clean up their kitchen. I don't want to be in a dirty kitchen. Then I'm like, if I cleaned up my kitchen, you wouldn't feel like you were in my kitchen with me, would you? <laughs> um, and Cindy says her books haven't downloaded yet. I'm not sure why that would be, but you can always contact Amazon customer service. 
Oh, Marilyn, you're so sweet too. Thank you so much for your support. Marilyn said she bought the both books for herself and as gifts. And Susan says, hey, Cheryl. And Faye says, she's watching me in her wood shop. Oh, awesome. <laughs> A special shout out to my friend Faith who makes wooden spoons that I need to take some pictures of. I have not forgotten. Okay, so, um, and Carol says she's also gifting the two books. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. So, what we have in here is oats and water, similar to what when we made oat milk. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup. You could use any sweetener of your choice. You could use agave nectar. You could even use sugar, sugar, but um, you've got to get it warm enough to melt and then it'll be a little problem later on, but you can do it. I'm going to put in a heaping tablespoon of cocoa because we're going to make a chocolate milkshake. You could also, instead of using oats, you could use pecans or cashews to make this, okay? And the pecans are really good because the pecan chocolate thing is kind of awesome. Um, a clean kitchen is not a reality, Jackie says. And I kind of agree with you. You guys see the kitchen as clean as it gets. It gets way worse than this. Um, Joanne said she did meet my books. Okay, so we're going to mix all this stuff together. Basically, we're making chocolate oat milk, right? And you could also make chocolate oat milk this way. I'm going to try and blend this a little more because I am not going to strain it. I may have overestimated how much I should put in here. So a lot of times you can see, um, and the reason I'm not going to strain it is because we're going to um, blend ice in here. So it's going to get blended a little bit extra and you're not, I don't notice them. Because so you can see kind of some of the big pieces here now. Now in this case you do want to use the xanthan gum or um, yeah, our ground chia seeds or something because the reason a, a frappuccino stays together is xanthan gum. So that's also why if you're making a pina colada, the liquor does what that does. <laughs> and, and it will work. It holds, things to, holds the ice. It melts it slightly and does this thing. If you're making a virgin pina colada, that is why it doesn't hold together. It gets kind of icy. So we're going to put this on here. And I like to let this get mixed in really well. This is also going to thicken it up. Now, I may have overestimated, but let's see. I'm going to taste this. Sweet enough, chocolatey enough, yummy enough. And I am going to, I'm going to put it in the bigger one just because I think I still overestimated. I always make too much of this. So the only reason I'm changing is to have room for my ice. And so that you can see it better instead of it just being a big glob. So I'm going to take this chocolate milk. You could also imagine you have chocolate milk. You've put a little xanthan gum in there. And now I'm going to use crushed ice from, the, from my freezer. You could use ice cubes. But this just makes it faster and easier on your blender. And so you can always start with a little less than you think and adjust, but I like mine super ridiculously thick. So we're going to start about there. So I have the ice a little more than half, okay? I'm going to go ahead and scrape down this ice in there. And... Cindy says, she, oh, that's sweet, Cindy. She wanted to thank me for the free month of classes. And Dixie says, do I have an SOS free vegan cookbook? All my cookbooks have options, oil-free options, um, usually sugar-free options and salt-free options. 
if it doesn't, you, most salt is optional, so you could use salt or a salt substitute. So yes, no, all the cookbooks that I have can be used by people who are in whole food plant-based diets, SOS diets. Most of the time I have um, options for Chef AJ's people who are on a SOFIS diet as well. Obviously not every single recipe. If I'm making a sweet recipe, some of that could change, but 90% of them. And... Oh, thank you, Jackie. And yeah, I hope everybody's coming to Kathy's cooking classes this month. If you're unemployed, underemployed, and underemployed does include things like disability or, for instance, you're, you're a blogger and your ad revenue is not as high as it was before the COVID. <laughs> Go for it. Also, I, so don't feel bad. I want you to take the classes and you can take them for free. You're getting a 31 day trial of Kathy's Club. And on the same sentence, if that's you, do take them. And if you're not being affected financially now, if you could get my bundle or get a class, that would be super helpful for me. So there you have it. Um, and Joanne says, most of my recipes have SOS. There's, you can make creamsicle shakes, absolutely. Um, And oh my goodness, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. Is it Pragati? And if I'm not, I apologize sincerely. Says that she loves the view out of my kitchen window, so bright. And so there's like a little overhang and a little gutter. And there's actually birds that are feeding their babies like right in that corner near the yellow flowers. So like a foot from the window. It's really cool to see. They've been there for, they keep coming back for years. Um... Oh, Carol, gifting the two books quick, quickly introduces new people to, to kindness, Kathy's cooking. You guys. Okay, sleeping in just was like the thing today. Um, and Brenda said, oh yeah. And how much, Donna wanted to know how much xanthan gum did I add to the chocolate oat milk? About an eighth of a teaspoon. So this container I've had for years. I just want you to, so it costs about 10 or $11 to get one, but I have had this probably for over five years, possibly longer. So I'm using a pinch or an eighth of a teaspoon or something for a batch. So, and I also have used it in a couple of other things, but this is my main go-to. And okay. Oh, and Cindy says, when I get paid again, we're going to the beach. As long as it's cool weather, this pasty white skin does not do well in the sun. Okay, so now we're gonna blend this together. And you've gotta, you've gotta be careful because especially if you're using a Vitamix, they're gonna get hot and that's gonna melt the ice. So it has to be this kind of in between, right? And so to me, that's not enough ice. There's a little bit of pooling, but not much. So I want more ice. And let's see if this is enough to do it. So I've put about that much more ice in, probably half a cup. And you can kind of tell, you'll see some holes and see how it's, get an idea. Yeah. You guys see how thick that is? That's how I like my shakes. Thick, thick. And if it's not holding together quite as perfectly as you were hoping for, I mean, this is still pretty good. Let's, let's show you overhead, sorry. So, I mean, that's pretty thick. It's pretty ice cream-like. And especially if you're using dates or something like that, I mean, it's, here, we'll put some in here. Oh, I'm gonna make a mess of this. Oh yeah, a big old mess. Let me see if I can clean this cup off a little bit. I have the biggest of all the messes right here. 
Yeah, a paper towel would probably be super helpful. This is not an easy glass to, um, to scoop things in. And we'll pretend it's a cocktail and we're sitting on the beach. And that little, little umbrellas are in there maybe. Okay. Mm. It's really good. And it tastes pretty much just like it did before I put the ice in there, right? Um, and yeah, the beaches are closed in Florida. She was just saying, she had asked if I had gone to the beach in a while and I said it had been a long time. So it's a running joke that she's going to take us to the beach. So don't worry. We are isolated and quarantining and doing all the things. Cheryl and I are being very, very careful about things. One day, I have faith that we will be able to go back out in the world and meet each other in person, though I love having you in my kitchen just like this. And let's see. Okay. Uh, Brenda says, just use your fingers to clean it up. Yeah, I like that. Actually, I might have licked it off were I not be filming. But yeah, even I'm not willing to be that silly on the interwebs. Okay, so now, today, you guys got to learn how to make regular old oat milk with boring, cheap rolled oats, right? Mine aren't cheap because they have to get gluten-free ones. But if you don't have to eat gluten-free, you can get a giant thing of oats for like 99 cents. You probably can make a half gallon of oat milk for probably... 10 cents, maybe a quarter if you get crazy and add something extra to it. Um, so you've got that, I've got your recipe. If you look up, there is a pumpkin pecan shake on healthy slow cooking, which is basically this ice creamless milkshake in another form using pecans instead of oats. And you can always switch that stuff out. Um, but if, if, do you guys have any questions? Yeah, oh my gosh, Joanne says it's still cheaper than Oatly. Soy milk at the store is cheaper than Oatly. Oatly is five dollars for a half gallon. I don't need, maybe I pay five dollars for um, how much? Two pounds of oats, right? And I can't even tell you how many half gallons that will make. And again, the best way to make to enjoy oat milk is to make it fresh every day. The second best way, and see how it still hasn't separated. I mean, you can see the foam separating from the bottom, but it hasn't separated at all, and it's not going to. It's because the xanthan gum is holding it together. So if you must, because I know everyone doesn't have the privilege to quarantine. A lot of you are still working every day to keep us fed and safe and healthy, and I appreciate that. So, and one day we'll all be in the new normal world where we're not just home, right? <laughs> so you can make some of this a few times a week and um, use some xanthan gum to keep it or be okay with it getting, it's gonna get slimier every day that it's in there. So just know that. Um, and how can you ship that shake out to me? I wish, I wish I could. Um, it's so good and your kids are going to love this if you haven't already been making them. But making them with the oats um, is something Cheryl and I have been doing because um, we have been trying to eat healthier and work a little bit on our weight. So therefore we're trying to eat a little less nuts. Um, so this as a dessert where we're basically we're having oats, a little bit of sweetener and um, some cocoa. I feel pretty awesome about, <laughs> you know, and a, and a speck of xanthan gum. Um, yeah, and Joanne says uh, five days tops on the oat milk, and I wouldn't even let it go five days. If, if it go, stays in my fridge for five days, we end up throwing it out. There's no way Cheryl will drink something that looks that slimy. Um, and it's through no fault of your own, but you can make small batches more often, or like this, and so, Kind of the same way I made the shake is how we would make tomato soup, only I was making it in the warm blender. You could also just put in um, a pot some water, some diced tomatoes, 
some spices, blah, 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 a little bit of oats. When you blend it together, that's what's gonna make, it's the oats and the water that makes its own milk, are the oats and the cashews. Um, Brandy says she has everything but the ice. Time to test out my new ice machine. Do you have snow? You could probably make this with snow if you can eat the snow up there, I don't know. I'm a dumb Southern person. So therefore we don't get a lot of snow to play with, but that would be my first go-to. I can, in the summer, I use up all the ice in our ice maker. So I am, I need all the ice all the time. Yeah, and small batches are the best. Like actually sipping that oat milk, I thought it was not gonna be as delicious as it was, and it was very, very delicious. All right, guys, I don't know what I'm gonna do tomorrow. We may chat. I may make something. If you have some ideas, let me know. Please, please share out the April classes. Um, I think no matter where you're watching this, there is a post there somewhere. If you're in a group, you can't share from a group, but on Plant-Based Instant Pot um, Facebook page, I have a post all about um, the classes for being free for unemployed and underemployed and I would really like to get that out there as much as possible so people can kind of have a chance to enjoy something. I've also added, went ahead and added in um, a staples class about how to make plant-based staples because I thought that would be really helpful and help save some money too. And Brandy says she does have lots of snow. Uh, yeah, and Joanne says, of course, don't use the yellow snow. Everybody listen to the Frank Zappa song. Uh, you are most welcome, Susan. And you guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. If you make oat milk, give me pictures. I want pictures. If you're not already in my free Facebook group, Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, go there. Show everybody your impressive oat photos. If you're bored enough, you could just make beautiful photos of your rolled oats just by there or you can make milk or you can make milkshakes and make everyone jealous and okay great you guys are wonderful thank you so much for spending your time with me and i'll talk to you guys tomorrow